welcome to lecture number 15 uh, under permeability and uh, seepage 4 and this is under module 2. So in this lecture we are going to discuss about different types of fluid flow in soils and seepage phenomenon, Laplace equation of continuity and solution of those Laplace equations in one dimensional and two dimensional and three dimensional flow conditions and then we will try to solve some typical problems. So what are the different types of fluid flows which are possible in soils? It can be one dimensional, it can be two dimensional and it can be three dimensional. A one dimensional flow condition is the one where the velocity vectors are all parallel and are equal in magnitude. In the conventional uh, laboratory if you are doing a constant head uh, test uh, where the flow which occurs is uh, one dimensional in nature because the flow occurs in a rigid container having uh, uh, a particular boundaries the flow happens in the, in the vertical direction. A one dimensional flow condition is the one where the velocity vectors are all parallel and are equal in magnitude. In other words water always moves parallel to some axis and through a constant cross section area. So a flow through a confined aquifer, a aquifer where two clay layers are there suppose if there is a sand layer in between and if there is a head which is actually driving the flow from left to right the flow can actually happen either from left to right or right to left. So steady downward flow occurs when the water is pumped from an underground aquifer or steady upward flow occurs as a result of artesian pressure when a less permeable layer is underlined by a permeable layer which is connected through the ground to a water source providing pressures higher than the local hydrostatic pressures. Suppose if you are having a less permeable layer and below that there is a permeable layer and if that permeable layer is actually receiving a water because of some artesian conditions and the water can flow in vertical direction or can have higher pressures compared to the hydrostatic pressure. So in this in such situations upward flow is possible that is a steady upward flow occurs as a result of artesian pressure when a less permeable layer is underlined by a permeable layer which is connected through the ground to a water source providing the pressures higher than the local hydrostatic pressures. What is two dimensional flow? Mostly uh, flow through uh, earthen dams or flow through a sheet pile wall if you are hydraulic structures or a particular uh, canal embankments where when you are retaining the water on both sides either in cutting or in filling the flow which actually happens uh, is uh, two dimensional in nature. It occurs when all the velocity vectors are confined to a single plane but vary in the direction and magnitude within that plane. So if you are actually assuming x and z are the x is the horizontal plane horizontal direction and z is the vertical direction. If y is along the length of the canal or an earthen dam then we can say that the flow which actually happens in x and z direction that means that the flow happens in xz plane. So in that situation in this slide which is actually shown here a sheet pile wall can actually have a two dimensional flow water flows downward here through this porous medium and then water actually moves upward in this region. And by the time the water reaches here the head which is actually driving the flow dissipates. So this is the upstream side and this is the downstream side. In case of long excavation or a earthen dam where there is a possibility that because of the upstream water level water flows in this fashion. So at different planes if you take these are the you know this it resembles, it resembles completely but the flow which actually happens in x direction and z direction and this is the plane xz plane. So these are the two examples for the two dimensional flow conditions. Then what is three dimensional flow? In what situations the three dimensional flow can occur? Three dimensional flow the example is that most general flow condition is that flow towards a water well. Suppose if you are having a water well there is a depletion curve water table here and the flow happens in, in three dimensionally. 
So this is example for three dimensional flow is flow towards a water well. So if the water flows in all the three dimension the directions that is in x direction, z direction and y direction and that is very similar in case of flow towards a water well. In case of some ground improvement projects when we are actually using free fabricated vertical drains or sand drains the flow actually happens also in three dimensional that is the because of the presence of the drains in the impermeable soil the flow happens in x and z directions as well as in y direction that is also another example for the three dimensional flow condition. So the multi dimensional flow in soils as of now we have considered one dimensional flow in soils where all fluid is actually flowing in the same directions. In most cases however the fluid is actually different fluid in different regions will be flowing in different directions. So the multi dimensional flows are actually possible. So it is required to learn how to solve the multi dimensional problems. So for this in order to develop these capabilities we use equations of continuity equation of continuity multi dimensional form of Darcy's law application. So if you are having a coffer dam within the middle of the river uh, the situation is that uh, the there is a situation where you have got the vertical sheet pile walls all around the uh, periphery of the water. So here water actually because of this the water tends to flow in this direction. This is the direction of the flow this is downward and this is upward and uh, with the symmetry also maintains in the same direction. So it is required to ensure and to know and assess the stability of this type of uh, structures when are, when are constructed along with the water. So the seepage and we have discussed about seepage is a phenomenon which occurs because of the prevalence of a head which is actually driving from higher head to the higher, higher potential to the lower potential. The equation of continuity and the Laplace equation is what we are actually going to discuss. In many practical cases the nature of the flow through the soil is such that the velocity and the gradient vary throughout the medium. So for these problems the calculation of flow is generally made by the use of the graphs represented as are referred to as flow nets. So the flow nets are nothing but the graphical representation of uh, the system of uh, uh, along the direction of the flow and uh, in the di direction perpendicular to the flow uh, which are represented by the set of lines or a nest of lines. Uh, which are actually in the direction of the flow or in the perpendicular to the direction of the flow. Uh, from these uh, problems the calculation of flow is generally made by the use of graphs referred to as flow nets. So the concept of the concept of the flow net is based on the Laplace equation of continuity which describes the steady flow condition for a given point in a soil mass and this has actually has got applications in heat flow and electrical uh, uh, the current flow and as in other allied applications particularly in heat transfer or the current electricity transfer from because of the high potential to the low potential. So the concept of flow net is based on the Laplace equation of continuity. So in this particular figure a particular hydraulic structure which is actually shown here and the derivation or the use of the Laplace equation of the continuity is the one which we are going to discuss. So we are having a structure a concrete hydraulic structure which is retaining the water H1 is the upstream water level and H2 is the downstream water level and so this is called the tail water level and this is the upstream water level and at the point A let us assume that a small element uh, which is actually having dimensions dx in along the x direction and dz along the y z direction and dy along the uh, y direction. So the unit volume or the volume of the element is dx dy dz and that, that particular element is actually experiencing a flow in and flow out that means that qx can be the flow in and qx out is the flow out of that element. So the assumption main assumption is that when the process of the flow when the, when the water is actually flowing through the uh, this particular element or any portion of the soil it is assumed that 
there is no volumetric change or no change in the effective stress. So in this particular situation uh, the, uh, a particular, the enlarged view of uh, details of the small element at point A is shown here the head at point, the head at point A let us say is small h and h1 minus h2 is the delta h which is the potential drop which is actually happening from upstream level to downstream level and this top surface of this downstream level is assumed to be as the datum and this is the a previous soil and here is the impervious bottom where the flow can actually happen along this direction only flow cannot actually perpendicular penetrate through this layer and uh, there is a certain thickness for this and uh, the flow is actually happening from upstream level to downstream level. So the purpose of this structure is to retain the water and uh, maintain this particular condition. So here in this particular uh, uh, detail of the element which is actually shown here Qx is the flow entering uh, the uh, Dz and Dy uh, area and uh, Qx plus Dqs is the flow coming out. So the net flow is dqx which is actually entering the plane dz dy area and coming out of the flow which is actually coming out of that particular plane is qx plus dqx. Similarly in vertical direction qz is the flow which is occurring in along area dx dz dx dy and uh, the qz plus dqz is the flow which is coming out of uh, that particular area similarly qz uh, in the y direction. So we have got in the three dimensional condition, consider, uh, condition we have considered where in x direction and y direction and z direction. So flows entering the soil prism in x and y z directions can be given by from the Darcy's law as follows. We knew that Q is equal to Kia and Ax is nothing but the cross sectional area through which the flow is occurring. So Kx is the permeability in the x direction, Ky is the permeability in the z direction and Kz is the permeability in the uh, uh, Kz is the permeability in the z direction. Ix, Iy, Ij are the hydraulic gradients. Uh, along uh, x and y and z directions. So we can write qx is equal to kx ix ax which can be written as kx into dou h by dou x into dy by dz and h is nothing but the hydraulic head at point a which was shown in the previous slide. Similarly qy is equal to ky iy ay. So ay is nothing but the cross sectional area along uh, y direction and uh, which is nothing but dx dz. So ky into dou h by dou y into dx dz. Similarly qz is equal to kz ij az where kz into dou h by dou z into dx dy. So where qx qy qz is equal to flow entering in the directions x y z respectively and where kx ky kz are the flow entering the directions x y z respectively. Now when the element when the water enters this element let us assume that uh, qx which is nothing but qx in entering this particular uh, area cross section area that is dy by uh, dz and qx plus d, uh, dqs that is nothing but the qx out which is the one which is actually leaving the element okay. So x1 is uh, at this point and x2 is at this point x2 minus x1 is nothing but the dx. So we can write for flow in x direction ax is equal to dy dz and h is nothing but the total head at point a where the element is was considered. So we can write qx is equal to qx in as kx dou h by dou x x1 that is at this point into dy dz. Similarly qx out we can write it as qs plus dqx is equal to kx dou h by dou x x2 dy dz. Now the difference of these two is nothing but the net flow which actually has taken place that is nothing but dqx is equal to kx into dou h by dou x x2 minus dou h by dou x uh, x1 into dy dz. So 
the do h by do x x2 minus do h by do x x1 the this particular term represents the change in gradient over a distance dx. So, this can be written as dqx is equal to kx into dou square h by dou x square into dx into dy by dz. So, dx dy by dz is nothing but a, a element volume which is which was considered considered in this particular derivation. So, using that we can actually now deduce the represent the respective flows leaving the soil prism in x and y z directions and which can be given again by applying the Darcy's law as follows q x plus d q x is equal to q x into i x plus d i x uh, that is into a x which is nothing but k x into dou h by dou x plus dou square h by dou x square uh, d x into d y d z. Similarly, in the y direction and z direction for the respective flows leaving the soil pressure can be computed. Now, using the principle of conservation of the fluid mass for steady flow through an incompressible medium, the flow entering in the soil element or flow entering in the element is equal to the flow leaving the element. So, by equating the inflow is equal to outflow, we can get like this, which is nothing but qx plus qy plus qz is equal to qx plus du qx, which is the outflow flow leaving the along the x direction and q i plus d q y is in the y direction and q g z plus d q z is in the z direction. By simplifying and we get and substituting the, the previous terms which we have discussed, we get that the net flow into or out of the element per unit time. So, nothing but k x into dou square h by dou x square plus k y into dou square h by dou y square plus k z into dou square h by dou z square is equal to 0. Here the 0 represents that the volume change per unit volume which is nothing but 1 by 1 plus e into dou e by dou t is equal to 0. That means that is dou e by dou t is equal to 0. So, because of that this particular term volume change per unit volume is 0. But however, in case of consolidation phenomenon where there is a volume change happens the term will remain. So, in the steady state CPS conditions when no volume change takes place, no volumetric changes takes place this particular term becomes 0. So, this particular term is the equation of continuity when k x k y k z when they are not equal to 0 then k x is equal to k x then and then they are actually permeabilities in x y z direction. So, for three dimensional flow condition the generalized Laplace equation of continuity is k x into dou square h by dou x square plus k y into dou square h by dou y square plus k z into dou square h by dou z square is equal to 0. And for two dimensional flow in x z plane that means that for flow through sheet pile wall or flow through an earthen dam or through a long, in ex long excavation or a canal embankment problem k x dou square h by dou x square and plus k z dou square by dou square h by dou z square is equal to 0. So, uh, if the soil is isotropic with respect to permeability then k x is equal to k y is equal to k z the permeability is equal that is k x is equal to k y is equal to k z is equal to k uh, k and the continuity equation can be simplified to uh, dou square h by dou x square plus dou square h by dou y square plus dou square h by dou z square is equal to 0 because k x is equal to k y is equal to k z is equal to k which is not equal to 0. So, because of that dou square h by dou x square plus dou square h by dou y square plus dou square h by dou z square is equal to 0. So, this is the simplified Laplace of equation of continuity for a soil having identical permeabilities in all the directions. That means that in k x is equal to k y is equal to k z is equal to k in x y and z directions when the permeability is identical and that means that isotropic with respect to the permeability. In case of a two dimensional flow for the x z plane when k x not equal to k z we write it as k x k x into dou square h by dou z dou square h by dou x square plus k z into dou square h by dou z square is equal to 0. If 
the permeability is uh, identical in x and z direction then we can write the simplified Laplace equ equation for equation of continuity for uh, two dimensional case as dou square h by dou x square plus uh, dou square h by dou z square is equal to 0. So flow through a constant head perimeter in the laboratory as we discussed that this represents the one dimensional flow. So here the water flow uh, happens from vertically in the direction. So this is the direction of the flow and these are the uh, points where the head dissipation is actually taking place. This is the available head, this is the point where the higher head is there. Suppose if the head, head which is driving the flow is say H and by the time it reaches here the head is dissipated. So the hydraulic gradient is nothing but H by L which is nothing but the hydraulic gradient. So for one dimensional flow in the Z direction the simplified equation of Laplace equation of continuity is dou square h by dou z square is equal to 0 where k is the permeability in the vertical direction. Change in the uh, uh, hydraulic gradient per unit distance in the uh, z direction. So dou square h by dou z square represents change in the hydraulic gradient per unit distance uh, in the z direction. Similarly if you are having in x direction it is uh, it represents the change in the hydraulic gradient per unit distance in the x direction. If you are considering for the one dimensional flow condition uh, Vx is equal to v, uh, Vy is equal to 0, velocity in x and y directions are 0 and uh, Ix and Ij is equal to, I, Ix is equal to 0 and uh, Ij is equal to constant. So because of that uh, the for the one dimensional flow condition, so these are the uh, boundaries of the container and the flow which actually happens uh, confined flow happens vertically uh, in the downward direction. So possible uh, so having discussed about the Laplace equation of uh, continuity what are the possible methods which are available for solving the Laplace equation analytical closed form or a series of solutions uh, of the partial differential equations quite mathematical and not very general. Numerical and solution methods are available typically the finite element method or finite difference method very powerful and easy to apply and can deal with uh, heterogeneity, anisotropy and two dimensional and three dimensional conditions. So nowadays uh, the, uh, the softwares finite element, based, finite element method based softwares are available which actually enable uh, uh, to deal with uh, heterogeneities, anisotropies and two dimensional and three dimensional cases and graphical techniques which are actually popular and which are known as the flow net methods commonly used in engineering practice to solve two dimensional problems. So the at present in this particular lecture we are going to discuss about the flow net method uh, in the forthcoming lectures we will be discussing about uh, some numerical solution method uh, particularly for two dimensional cases with, with and without uh, uh, isotropic conditions. The flow net method is a straightforward graphical method to solve two CPS problems. The solutions of Laplace equation consists of two families of orthogonal curves in x and z plane x is a particular plane over which the flow is actually happening and the that is the plane x and z are the plane over which the flow is happening. So the family of these two sets of curves in x and z direction is known as the, the flow net. So if you look into the figure which is actually shown here there is a, a system of uh, the red lines which are actually shown here and there is a set of yellow lines which are actually shown here. And this dimension which is actually shown as e, A and this dimension is B. So this can be also indicated as B and uh, length L this is called the ratio a by b is called aspect ratio or ratio a by b or b by l is called as the aspect ratio and these are actually called as flow lines and the space between these two is called as flow channel. So in this case in the partial flow net which is shown here they are the two flow channels are there and the lines which are drawn within yellow color they are called equipotential line which is the line joining the equal heads. So if I take a head along this the total head will be identical. 
similarly here the total head will be identical but this is the direction of the flow but from this point to this point if h1 is the head here h2 is the head here the h1 is actually greater than h2 so h1 minus h2 which is nothing but the delta h that is the potential drop takes place between any two equipotential lines the flow line is basically defined as the path which a particle of water flows in its course of seepage through a saturated soil mass this is called as the flow line so we have said that the flow net is nothing but the nest of system of nest or uh, or system of flow lines and equipotential lines so in this particular slide schematically um, a partial flow net is shown here where this is the direction of the flow and h1 h2 h3 are the uh, heads at uh, at this particular uh, equipotential line 1 2 and 3 that means that along this line the total head is h3 along this line total head is h2 along this line total head is h1 that's why it is called as equipotential lines and l is this length and b the b by l or previous slide we have discussed about a by b is called the aspect ratio this ratio of b by l should be equal to uh, approximately uh, constant and should be equal to 1 for uh, squares for convenience for convenience we select uh, b by l is equal to uh, you know as 1 a curvilinear squares and uh, h1 greater than h2 greater than h3 indicates that as the flow actually happens the dissipation of the energy takes place so the flow net solution is a graphical method for solving the two dimensional laplace equation and for two dimensional uh, condition uh, del square h is equal to 0 that is nothing but do square h by do x square plus do square h by do z square is equal to 0 for one dimensional condition if the flow is actually happening in along the x direction it is called as do square h by do x square is equal to 0 if the flow is actually happening only in the vertical direction that is say z direction then do square h by do z square is equal to 0 so it describes that the energy loss associated with the flow through the medium and is used to solve many kinds of the flow problems including those involving the heat electricity and seepage so this particular laplace equation of continuity what is used in geotechnical engineering is also used in other allied areas like heat flow or electricity flow and of course we are what we are using for the seepage so uh, now having actually said now we actually have seen that the flow lines and uh, uh, the uh, equipotential lines uh, what is the uh, you know condition which actually it maintains the orthogonality so in order to prove that let us actually try to look into this particular solution so flow nets are based on the two mathematical functions one is uh, potential function and that is nothing but the phi and the flow or the stream function that is psi so now we have let us uh, select uh, uh, say a potential function phi xz that is for the two dimensional condition x and z do pi by do x is equal to that is nothing but the velocity in the x direction is equal to minus k do h by do x minus is given because the head decreases in the direction of the flow do pi by do z is equal to vz is equal to minus k into do h by do z so let us uh, uh, put them as equation a and equation b do pi by do x is equal to vx is equal to minus k do h by do x do pi by do z is equal to vz is equal to minus k do h by do z so by differentiating and substituting the laplace equation of uh, continuity Uh, when we substitute the previous uh, the equations a and b and we get when we substitute in the uh, laplace equation of continuity for two dimensional flow condition we get do square pi by do x square plus do square pi by do z square is equal to 0 so this indicates that the potential function pi xz in the two dimensional case satisfies also the laplace equation so do square phi by do x square plus do square phi by do z square is equal to 0 Uh, similarly now uh, when we take uh, uh, when we when we take this uh, integrating uh, a and b 
uh, that is the uh, velocity functions we have written in the x direction and z direction that is the previously we named it as a and b which is dou pi by dou x is equal to v x is equal to minus k dou h by dou x dou pi by dou z is equal to v z is equal to minus k dou h by dou z by integrating uh, this uh, the, this particular functions we get pi x z is equal to minus k into h of x z plus function of z for that is from a that is this and from b we get pi is equal pi x z is equal to minus k h x z plus g x. Since x and z can be varied independently function of z is equal to g x is equal to constant. So, with that we can write that is a c. So, we can write as h x z is equal to minus 1 by k into c minus pi x z. So, if, s, if h x z represents a constant h then the equation c represents a curve in the x z plane. So, uh, if h x z represents a constant h equation c represents a curve in x z plane. So, equipotential line the curve in the cross section such that phi is constant along the curve that is why we call it as equipotential line. So, the curve in the cross section basically it is a curve in the cross section such that phi is constant along the curve. So, the total head is constant along the equipotential line thus the family of the curve family of curves is similar to the contour lines or a topographical map. So, except drawn in vertical section and, uh, and lines representing equal heads not equal elevations. So, what we are actually talking is that not equal elevations the elevations are different, but total head is equal. So, the total head is constant along the equipotential line and equipotential line is a curve in the cross section such that phi is constant along the curve. Now, along such contours of say equal total head say d phi is equal to 0 from the definition of the partial differentiation and combining this equation we can write now d phi by d x dou phi by dou x is equal to v x and dou phi by dou z is equal to v z. So, v x is the direction of the this is the x direction this is the z direction and this is the or the element d x and this is the d z in the vertical direction d x in the uh, y direction and this is the uh, flow line. So, um, d pi is equal to dou phi by dou x into d x plus dou pi by dou z into d z. So, which can be written as d phi is equal to dou phi by dou x is nothing but v x d x plus v z d z v z is nothing but dou pi by dou z along an equipotential line phi is constant. So, when phi is constant the differential of that is constant. So, d phi is equal to 0 by putting this 0 what we get is that the slope of this line slope of this line as uh, nothing but so this is an equipotential line d z by d x phi is equal to minus v x by v z. So, the slope of this uh, equipotential line d z by d x phi is equal to minus v x by v z. So, what we have deduced is that uh, from the definition of uh, from the along a particular contour when you take a particular equipotential line having uh, the slope of that equipotential line we would deduce as minus v x by v z. Similarly, considering the flow or the stream function psi consider the uh, you know a function of psi x z such that dou psi by dou z is equal to. So, psi x z is nothing but the flow function or the stream function in the x and z direction and v x uh, dou psi by dou z is equal to v x is equal to minus k dou h by dou x minus dou psi by dou x is equal to v z is equal to minus k dou h by dou z. So, this is inverse of the potential function. Okay. So, combining the equations and substituting in the Laplace equation of continuity we again will get that dou square psi by dou x square plus dou square high by dou z square is equal to 0. When we substitute these, these, these particular derivations a and uh, say d and e in uh, Laplace equation of continuity we get dou square psi by dou x square plus dou square psi by dou z square is equal to 0. So, this represents that psi x z also satisfies the Laplace equation. Now, this indicates that both phi x z and psi x z this satisfies the Laplace equation of continuity. The system of these lines containing the flow function and uh, potential function they form a, a flow net uh, 
solution which actually satisfies the Laplace of the equation of continuity. So again in order to deduce the slope of this stream function or flow line from the definition of the partial differentiation and combining equation we can actually get minus dou phi dou psi by dou x is equal to vz and so this is the flow line and dou psi by dou z is equal to vx. So total differentiation uh, differential of psi xz is given by d psi is equal to uh, dou psi by dou x into dx plus uh, uh, dou psi by dou z into dz. So uh, d psi is equal to minus vz into dx plus vx dz this we have substituted here for a given flow line if psi is constant. So along a given flow line if the psi is constant the differential of that uh, 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 constant is 0 so d psi is equal to 0 when we equate that we actually get uh, you know dz by dx psi is equal to vz by vx. So the slopes are identical the product of that is equal to minus 1 that means that both this flow lines and uh, uh, and equipotential lines are orthogonal in nature that is the reason why while uh, drawing the flow, uh, flow nets it has to be remembered that always the equipotential line intersects the uh, intersects the uh, flow line orthogonally. So it is apparent that the flow lines and equipotential lines intersect each other at right angles are orthogonal to each other that is from the deliberations what we discussed the product of this uh, slopes uh, say m1 m2 equal to minus 1 that represents the orthogonality condition. So here a particular system which is actually shown so this particular angle which is actually uh, you know have to be 90 degrees. So this is the flow line and this is the flow channel this is the equipotential line 1 and equipotential line 2. So delta h is actually is the pressure, pressure drop which is actually occurring from this equipotential line to this equipotential line delta q is the flow which is actually occurring through this particular channel and delta L is the length over which this flow is actually happening delta B is the so the area if you are actually taking uh, delta Q with the flow is actually happening delta B into 1 the 1 is actually is the in the other direction a unit area is a unit uh, width is actually considered. So equation of uh, use of continuity equation for uh, solution of simple flow problems let us say in this particular uh, one dimensional flow through two layers of soils or uh, you know if uh, we can actually deduce for two layers and then we can actually uh, use for uh, say in, in principle if h1 is the head here and uh, by the time the it reaches here the head has to be 0 that means that we have discussed that if h is the head which is actually available and over a length l then the hydraulic gradient here the head available is h and here this point is 0 that means that 50 percent of uh, length l by 2. Uh, it has to be h by 2 but when you are actually having two soils then the boundary conditions actually the different. So in this particular uh, slide what we have considered is that we have got two soils soil A and soil B having two different permeabilities but the flow occurs in uh, along the x direction and z is the direction which is actually shown here and LA is the length of the soil A and LB is the length of the soil A and LA plus LB put together is the total length and at LA uh, the head which is actually available is H2 and uh, at point 2 that is the end of soil A the head is actually say H2 and H1 is actually greater than H2 at this point it is equal to 0. So this uh, if it is assumed as datum so H1 H2 and then head available is here is 0. So this is the along the x direction and the one point 1.1 is at uh, beginning of uh, soil A point 2 is the interface of at the interface of soil A and soil B and point 3 is at the end of that is soil B. So in the case 1 that one dimensional flow through two layers of soil the flow is in the one direction only that is the x axis the length of the two soil layers which are actually described as LA and LB and their quotient of permeabilities are given as KA and KB in the direction of x axis. The total head at sections 1 and 3 are known required is that total head at any other section for length between 0 and LA plus LB. So integration of Laplace equation of for the one dimensional flow which is nothing but along the x direction which is nothing but dou square h by dou x square is equal to 0 which actually gives 
the uh, h is equal to c 2 x plus c 1 where c 1 c 2 are the constants uh, for the flow through the soil a the boundary conditions what we can actually use is that at x is equal to 0 head is h 1 because that is at the point 1 and at x is equal to l a that is at the end of uh, soil a head is equal to h 2. Uh, when you sub when you substitute this uh, in this particular h is equal to c 2 x plus c 1 c 1 c 2 can be obtained and then we get actually h is equal to minus of h 1 minus h 2 by l a into x plus h 1 for 0 this is valid between uh, 0 uh, for x uh, between 0 and l a. Now for the flow through the soil b the boundary condition can be given as at x is equal to l a h is h2 that is uh, beginning of soil b and by again by using h is equal to c 2 x plus c 1 but using the new boundary conditions and at x is equal to l a plus l b that is the end of soil uh, b h is equal to 0 that is head uh, uh, available is 0. So when we substitute and determine c 1 and c 2 and simplify we will get h is equal to minus of h 2 by l b into x plus h 2 into 1 plus l a by l b this is actually valid between uh, from l a to l a plus l a plus l a b that is uh, it is at the end of uh, soil a and to the uh, end of soil b the total length. So q is nothing but the rate of flow through the soil a and the rate of flow through the soil b by uh, the but flows are equal because the same head which is actually driving. So because of that q is equal to k into h1 minus h2 into uh, l a h1 minus h2 by l a into a a is the cross section area of uh, soil a and cross section area of soil, a, soil b is also same. So uh, the rate of flow through the soil a uh, can be written as k a into h1 minus h2 uh, by l a l a is nothing but the length of soil a into area a which is the cross section area of the perpendicular to the direction of the flow and kb is equal to kb into h2 by lb h2 is the head available at uh, uh, point 2 where the beginning of soil b into a so by equating and then simplifying we will be able to get h2 in terms of ka h1 divided by la into ka by la plus kb by lb so the h2 uh, if you look into this uh, when you substitute say uh, at L a is equal to L b and K a is equal to K b H 2 is obtained as uh, H 1 by 2 that is uh, correct because uh, at the off length of the uh, soil if the both soils are actually having same permeability the head dissipated is will be 50 percent of the head over which the flow is actually happening. So, uh, further when you come uh, use this one we actually have got two things for, for x is equal to 0 to l a we have got h is equal to h 1 into 1 minus k b x uh, k a l b plus k b l a and for uh, x is equal to l a to l a plus l b then h is obtained as h 1 plus uh, h 1 into uh, k a by k a l b plus k b l a into l a plus l b minus x say here when we substitute l a is equal to l b is equal to l k a is equal to k b is equal to k h is nothing but h 1 into 1 minus x by l for say at x is equal to 0 uh, h is equal to h 1 when x is equal to l uh, h is equal to 0 that means that the head available at the end of the soil is 0 soil sample is 0 at mid high mid length of the sample that is x is equal to l by 2 uh, h is equal to h 1 by 2 but this gives actually for for the length up to x is equal to 0 to l a from x is equal to l a to l a plus b the head at any point along the direction of the flow can be determined this is by using the equation of continuity. The pore pressure in the steady state CPS conditions so here in this particular slide where you are actually having uh, uh, this is the equipotential line and this is the direction of the flow that is the flow line what we call. So between uh, two equipotential lines let us say that delta h is the drop and uh, the elevation uh, which is uh, nothing but this h q and this is the datum. So uh, 
uh, h, h i is nothing but the head drop per unit length for steady state C p is i is constant. So, change in pore water between points p and q is given by per unit weight which is given by delta u is equal to i gamma w into delta s delta u is equal to i gamma w into delta s. So, the flow net solutions particularly uh, when water flows through a porous medium such as soil head is lost to the friction. Similar head losses occur when water seeps uh, uh, through an earthen dam that is unconfined flow an example for an unconfined flow is earthen dam or under a sheet pile wall uh, coffer dam or a concrete masonry dam. So, that is actually given as a, a confined flow. As the particle of water proceeds from A to B uh, it exerts a frictional drag on the soil particles that the drag in turn produces a seepage pressure in the soil structure. So, as the flow happens from higher potential to the lower potential uh, the it exerts a frictional drag on the soil particles in turn it actually produces the seepage pressures. So, the hydraulic structures are required to be checked against these seepage pressures if the seepage pressures are high there is then there is a susceptibility of the different types of failures. So, in this particular uh, slide an example problem of uh, uh, flow net construction is shown. This is an example of uh, a sheet pile wall which is uh, uh, retaining uh, a water of 3 meter in the upstream side and uh, on the downstream side uh, this is called as a tail water level which is 0.5 meter is the uh, you know the tail water level which is maintained. So, the drop or potential drop total potential head uh, the, the drop which is actually given as 3 minus 0 0.5 which is nothing but the 2.5 meters is the total drop. Now, here first of all the boundary conditions uh, need to be identified before uh, you know commencing the writing of the uh, are drawing these flow nets or constructing the flow nets impervious layers and previous layers. Let us assume in the given problem this is the permeable layer and this is the depth of penetration of sheet pile wall and here this is the impermeable layer and it can be a clay or it can be a, a rock uh, stratum. So, where the flow actually happens along this plane only. So, the in identifying the boundary conditions A B which actually represents an equipotential line again E f which represents the equipotential line and similarly here when it comes to this particular uh, line this actually represents the flow line because the flow actually happens along this boundary along this uh, impervious layer. So, the first flow line is actually said as uh, also line is a creeping line is called as B C D E is also called as a creeping line which actually creeps along the penetrated sheet pile wall. So, you can see here when it meets this equipotential line the orthogonality is actually maintained. So, in drawing the flow nets it has to be ensured that the orthogonality is actually maintained properly here. So, this is the first flow line subsequently depending upon the convenience like it can be divided into uh, the configuration or geometry it can be divided into 5 are 6 flow lines. So, here we have got flow line 1 and flow line 2, flow line 3, flow line 4 and then the flow line 5. So, the space between that is actually called as a, a flow channel. So, this is one flow channel 1, flow channel 2, flow channel 3 and 1, 2, 3, 4 this can be approximated as 4.5 or so. So, the number of flow channels here are 4.5. And uh, now this is uh, an equipotential line and this is an equipotential line and these are flow lines. Now here there is a flow line. So, the line which is actually if it is dropped here this being a flow line orthogonality here. So, this is an equipotential line this is a flow line. So, orthogonality by maintaining the orthogonality we can draw another line another line. So, similarly here. So, these are drawn such a way or selected such a way that the orthogonality is actually maintained between a flow line and equipotential line. So, in this case if you look into this there are the numbering is done such a way for convenience it is numbered as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, this represents uh, there are 6 potential drops. So, 6 potential drops in the sense 
at uh, sixth potential that is uh, here the head available is uh, say 2.5 meters at this point the head available is 0 nothing but 2.5 into 0 by 12 uh, 0 by 6 is equal to 0. Similarly here sixth potential line means um, that is the 6 by 6 into 2.5 that means that the full head is available at this point. So the equipotential line AB is with a uh, potential head of 2.5 meters equipotential line uh, uh, EF is uh, having a, a total head as 0 that is the potential available head available is 0 here. So here second uh, potential draw potential line third sec, uh, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So by knowing this number of uh, flow channels and number of potential drops we can calculate the flow through a sheet pile wall and uh, if it is an ethan dam we can also get what is the CPA is actually happening through ethan dam and uh, uh, or leakage through a reservoir. So this is another problem where the flow net construction for a, uh, a weir and where uh, you, there is upstream water level which is actually retained here the Tolstom water level is at the uh, base which is actually located here. So uh, this is the impermeable layer and this is the permeable layer the water flows in this direction. So this is the these are the direction of the flows. So you look into this 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So you can say that the 5 flow channels are there and this is the last flow line. So this is the equipotential line and this is the equipotential line and these are this is the first flow line where the creeping uh, water flow actually happens along this and then perpendicular by maintaining the orthogonality we write the, the number of potential lines. So here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that means that there is a 12 potential drops are there. So by knowing uh, say 9 by 12 that is uh, uh, the uh, 9 by 12 into 10 meters is the head available at this point. So by knowing this uh, total head and by knowing the elevation from the if this is the datum if this point is datum let us say that this is located at 2 meters that is by knowing this elevation we can actually calculate the pressure available at this particular point. So uh, in the process of seepage there will be some dissipation by the time it comes here the head which is actually takes place 1, 2, 3 drops it, it undergoes so 9 by 12 into 10 and then if you take the elevation head with respect to the datum which is selected here we will be able to calculate the pressures at each point. So the calculation of this uh, total heads and this pressure is important for assessing the uh, uplift pressure distribution or the pore, pore water pressure distribution along these things and the, the in the process in, in turn which can be used for uh, designing these hydraulic structures. So the CPA is particularly the flow net solution the computation of uh, discharge which what we discussed is that the aspect ratio which is nothing but A by B which is constant uh, basically they are curvilinear squares. So hydraulic gradient I is equal to uh, delta H by B. So this delta H is given by for one uh, potential drop which is HL by ND by B. So we can grade we can get this uh, as a delta H by B. So equipotential drops between two flow lines is delta H by uh, HL by uh, delta H is equal to HL by ND. So from Darcy's flow, uh, flow in each channel is given by delta Q is equal to Q into HL by ND by B into A. If, if you wanted to purchase the total discharge per unit width then it has to be multiplied with the we have calculated this per, per flow channel. Now let us say that there are n number of flow channels then it is multiplied by n or here the total number of flow channels are indicated by n suffix F. So we can write for a uh, case where the flow is actually occurring through isotropic medium then Q is equal to KHL the, the HL is nothing but the, uh, the potential head into NF by ND into A by B. If the ratio A by B is equal to 1 then the A by B uh, will be will not be represented. So uh, consider this particular example problem where uh, the flow net method uh, which is required to be adopted. So based on this consideration this delta H is equal to 2 meters and this is the point where the datum has been selected. 
So here uh, uh, based on the discussions here uh, we can actually say that this is an equipotential line and this is an equipotential line and this is a flow line and flow channel 1, flow channel 2, flow channel 3 and flow channel 4. So we have taken a NF is equal to 4, ND is equal to 12 because there is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So uh, if you wanted to measure say uh, pressure at uh, point B, we can actually calculate uh, total head at B, total head at B is equal to pressure head at B plus elevation at B. Suppose here it is given that 1.5 meters above the uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, stratum. So that means that it is 3.5 meters uh, below this level that is 6.5 meters below this level. If this is selected as uh, uh, datum then this will be minus 6.5 meters. So the pressure available here the total head is nothing but it is nothing but uh, 0, 1 and 2 and the 2 meters is the delta H that is the head loss. So 2 uh, into uh, uh, that is uh, uh, 2 by 12 uh, is equal to PB uh, into uh, this particular uh, minus 6.5 meters. So with that we will be able to get pressure head B is equal to 6.333 meters and if the unit weight of water is taken as 10 kilo Newton per meter cube we can calculate the pressure at B as 68.33 kilo Pascals. So what we have done is that by with the total uh, head which is actually available at this particular point and by knowing the elevation head we calculated the pressure at B like that each and every point it can be estimated and this particular data is useful for calculating and assessing failure against the heave and piping failures for these hydraulic structures which we will be discussing in the future course of uh, deliberations.